October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and our next guest is here to bring us all up to speed on the latest medical updates, precautions, and essential information we need to know. Please welcome breast cancer medical oncologist at NYU Langone and the author of the book, All in Her Head, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Komen. Hi. Right. exams, okay, sure. how often and at what point should women start getting mammograms? So for average risk women, and we can talk about what that means, you should start screening at age 40 with mammograms. And that wow. was just lowered from age 50 as the recommendation 50. At 40. before. Yeah. What at if you age have breast 40. cancer in the family? So that's an excellent question. If you have breast cancer in the family, and what does that mean? That could mean your father's side, because we often forget about that, yeah. or your mother's side. And you really should talk to your doctor about any kind of family history of any type of cancer. Mm -hmm. And then bring that information to your doctor, because based on family history and other personal risks, risk factors, you may need to start screening before age 40 with mammograms and potentially with other types of modalities as well, such okay. as ultrasound or breast MRI. And what about self-breast exams? How often should Women so that's a great question, because I think we've been misleading women about that. Your breasts are on your body. Yeah. We should know what they feel like and what our normal feels like. Mm. So I recommend, if you are menstruating, do it about two to three days after your period when your breasts are less tender, less swollen. And do self-breast exams. There are great um, tools online for how to do that. You don't want to miss your armpits or your clavicles. Other things, it's not just lumps to look out for, but also any skin changes, anything that feels abnormal to you. And to bring that to your doctor. Even attention. what about after you stop, when you stop menstruating? Exactly. So then you, it doesn't have to be after your period, but pick a time maybe once a month, the yeah. first of the month. Some people say feel it on the first. So you take that time for yourself okay. to get to know what your breasts feel like on a normal monthly basis. And doctor, this year the FDA updated its yes. mammography regulations saying that patients must be notified mm -hmm. if they have dense breasts. Mm -hmm. So can you talk us through what it means to have dense breasts and what are the additional I have screenings? Dense Every yeah, year I get that letter. Yes, yep. and I'm glad you've been informed, but the problem is so many women in America have not been. So this FDA ruling is really critical information. A common misconception is that you can feel dense breasts or see dense breasts, mm -hmm. but really this is a term based on what a radiologist sees on a mammogram. Mm -hmm. And it relates to the to tissue versus the fat on the imaging. Yeah. And what it means is it can mean that it's hard to pick up a breast cancer sometimes on mammogram, and if a woman has dense breasts, and now they'll be notified if they have them, they may need to talk to their doctor about a potentially breast ultrasound or mm. breast MRI. Oh, so yeah. women need to bring this and information. And will insurance cover that? Yes. That's the additional a, the That additional is a great screenings. question. And I'm so glad you asked that because one would hope mm -hmm. in this country yeah. that what helps detect early breast cancers and save lives should be covered by insurance. Now, I'm not a politician, but Let's hope people do the right thing. Yeah. Yes. My experience, I have dense breasts as well. My experience is that the insurance companies have covered the ultrasounds and the MRIs, yeah. including the mammograms. The reality is not every woman in this country has such has great access. Yeah. And yeah. we need to make sure that we improve that and provide equitable care to every woman in this country. Yeah. It's, it's great. cancer is that it's a disease for of women over yes. 50, but the rates of women under 40 contracting it are going up at alarming rates. Um, why do you think so many young women, I, I have friends right now in their yeah. 40s who both just were detected. Um, why are the numbers going up? And this is something that we have seen over the years. Doctors have been talking about it, and now we have the data to prove it. And it is rising at an alarming rate. Mm -hmm. Over 12,000 women under the age of 40 are diagnosed every year. Many wow. of these women are my patients, mm -hmm. and we are in desperate need to better understand what are the biological reasons yeah. for why this rise is ongoing. There are some ideas that, you know, when we look at the age of menstruation, that, that women are getting, girls are getting their periods much, much earlier, mm -hmm. and that's a longer lifetime experience exposure to estrogen. There's factors such as obesity and sedentary lifestyle. But let me oh. tell you to so many of women that, that are watching right now and my patients who have done, quote unquote, everything right. Yeah. They exercise. They did not, you know, they had an average age onset of their period. They are still getting breast cancer. What is the average cancer. age for onset of your period? Well, now it's now. changing. It's yeah. much lower. Yeah. I mean, you see girls that are 9, 10, yeah. 11. This is far yeah. earlier than but it, it used to have. it's also not just women, right? There's men getting exactly. breast cancer. Exactly. Exactly. And that's such an important point because they can feel mm -hmm. left out in this dialogue as well. For 2,000 men are diagnosed every year. Wow. Well, black women who develop breast cancer are 40% more mm -hmm. likely to die of the disease uh, than white women. Why is that, and what can we do to change those stats? 
It's a heartbreaking statistic, and it, it relates not only to breast cancer, but access mm. to quality care mm. for not just breast cancer, but so many diseases and syndromes that disproportionately mm -hmm. affect women. Now, in some instances with breast cancer, particularly among young, young, younger black women, there is a slightly increased <coughs> risk of things like triple negative breast cancer, which is okay. a more aggressive type of breast cancer. But on the whole, when you look at the data, it is really about access to care, mm -hmm. quality care. Insurance. It's not just insurance, but being able to see a doctor who is skilled in treating breast cancer. Mm -hmm. It's about access to mammograms. It's about having a doctor that is culturally competent to take care of you. There are so many societal biases that are affecting not only these breast cancer statistics, but other diseases that are affecting black women. We've, um, doctor, we've been hearing a lot about breast cancer risk assessment, which mm -hmm. is something I had not heard about. Yes. What is it and should we all be taking it? So breast cancer risk assessment tool is just a simple calculation that you can do online and bring that to your doctor if you Google it. It helps based on your personal and family history to determine what's your lifetime risk of breast cancer. And that helps determine whether you need to start screening before age 40 with mammograms and potentially breast MRI and ultrasound and helps refine the type of screening that you need so that if you do have breast cancer, ideally it's caught earlier and curable. Well, Olivia Munn, credited yes. that assessment yes. to finding hers because she'd had a clean mammogram. Exactly. And then she did that. And that and prompted went, the MRI. Yes, so mm -hmm. it can save lives. Exactly. Doctor, is there an age where a woman can stop going to the gynecologist? <laughs> what a great question. <laughs> you know, what a way to end the second. I think that if you have a question about your body, there is no cutoff for when you should be able to seek access to care. And when it comes to aging and older women, we forget about the aging woman too often in society. Mm -hmm. So if you have questions about painful intercourse, about vaginal dryness, recurrent UTIs, there is not a cutoff for when you should be going to I your doctor. I wasn't really talking about all that. <laughs> but, but I as am. As long as you brought it up. Yeah, and <laughs> I think it's really important yeah. that we not forget about women at any age. One yeah. time I was getting a pap smear and my phone went off and they were playing When the Saints Go Marching In. I'm not kidding. <laughs> that's, a, that's a true story. Thank you for it coming never by. Changed. Very good. <laughs> Dr. Elizabeth Coleman, she will be on our Behind the Table podcast today to talk more about this very important topic. You can buy the book or on our heads by clicking on the QR code on your screen. Everyone in the audience is going home with one. You're all getting one. <laughs> <laughs>